episode four. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Welcome. Uh, it's been one month cr crazy, right? Uh, September has been pretty crazy. Uh, on Tuesday, actually, it'll be the to the day, one month since moving out here. And wow, what a journey it's been so far. But it's just beginning. Uh, got a lot lot more to do, a lot more to see, a lot more to go before I get used to being here. But one month down, time really flew by. Uh, this week, again, was flew right by, just like last week. And it's starting to scare me a little that I'm just in this routine. Life's flying by. Uh, and I don't want that to happen. I'm going to try to slow things down, take everything day by day, and just enjoy it while I, while I have it. Um, because you never know, shit can happen, and life can start being, being a little, uh, being a little depressing. But right now, life is good, everything's great. Um, it's been a month, so hopefully this month slows down a little, and we get closer to the holidays. Things will, things will seem more realistic. That I'm actually in LA, um, actually doing this daily, not just. Waking up, going to work, coming home, sleep. Waking up, going home, going to work, going home, sleep. Um, gonna try to break these routines, do a little different things each day. Hopefully, um, and yeah, hopefully it brings me to new wonderful places. Uh, but this week, I woke up, I was doing some stuff, and then I realized I was like, shit, today's Saturday, I gotta record the podcast. And usually throughout the week, or I'll like jot down ideas that I want to talk about. I had nothing this week. Uh, obviously, do football. And I just had football written down. I was like, let me go finish whatever I was doing. And then I started doing my stuff. And then I couldn't think of a couple of topics. And then I tweeted out, needed some topics. Uh, thank you to everyone that responded. Big shout out to my buddy, Joel. Um, he hit me up with a bunch of topics to talk about. Um, he's actually a very talented rapper, musician. Uh, I'm going to link his SoundCloud and his uh, YouTube in the description. Please check him out. Um, his name is Ian Lasco, real name Joel. Um, I'll put his Twitter down there too. Go follow him. Um, but yeah, shout out to him for helping me with these topics because um, I totally forgot that Clash of Champions is tomorrow. Um, you think I would remember, right? But I'm not gonna watch it live. I have something to do, but uh, I will watch it Monday uh, before Raw. Hopefully, actually no, probably not because I get home when Raw starts. So I'll probably watch it during Raw and then read the results for Raw after, something like that. Um, but yeah, so next week we'll definitely have the um, review, but the predictions will be coming later in this podcast. Uh, I'm going to start with football. Still hot, still big topic. Um, last week, didn't have a great week, went 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, Overall, that brings me to 19-13. and 13. Uh, The start of this week didn't go well. I didn't actually make a prediction in the video in the podcast. I forgot to make the Thursday prediction, and I remember that I didn't make one at work. Um, so I logged on to YouTube and wrote a comment on the video picking the Texans, and obviously that didn't go as I thought it would. I said that uh, Garoppolo was good; he probably would have won the game, but Brissett I didn't think had it, um, and they got shut out. So the Pats ended up winning. Uh, Brissett looked fine. Uh, he's hurt, though. He need, may need surgery on his thumb, which is just its just laughable how the Patriots quarterbacks are just getting suspended, injured, injured. And now Julian Edelman will probably play quarterback, or Garoppolo may be back. I don't actually know yet. But that, that they just keep winning. It's that, yes, I'm, I do believe that a quarterback, a, good, a really good quarterback is important to a team. But the system is just as important. And Bill Belichick has the best system. No, I don't think any quarterback could be good in Bill Belichick's system, but if he had enough time, he could make any quarterback work in the system. Matt Castle, who's not a good quarterback, went 11-5 and five and just barely missed the playoffs because another team had a better uh, division record. I think it was... I can't remember who made the playoffs. The Jets, probably. I, I don't remember. But... So, yeah, I think with enough time and preparation um, that Bill can make any quarterback work in his system. 
Um, for other teams, though, I don't think it's as simple. I think they need good quarterbacks. They need guys who can take over the game. Um, but yeah, every team's different. But th- this Patriots team, I don't think they're gonna go sixteen and zero because they did that once. Uh, it rarely happens. It never, almost never happens. Besides the one time they did it, and the one time the Dolphins did it, but. It's just, it's just too difficult. Something's gonna happen, and of course, I, I have a feeling that Brady's gonna get one or two losses this year, which is crazy to say after seeing what happened. But that's how football works. Any given Sunday, right? But the Patriots are forced to be reckoned with, so it, it's gonna be a crazy season for them. Um, but as as the rest of Week Three went. Or sorry, as rest of week two went, uh, my Giants got a W again. Another close game that they won. It's weird waking up on Mondays not being disappointed that the Giants just lost. So that's that's a good sign. Um, but the games I got wrong last week for keeping score at home were I said the Redskins would beat the Cowboys. Thought the Cowboys had a chance, but I ended up picking the Redskins. Bit me in the butt. Um, same thing I said though, Bengals Steelers, but I made the right choice there. Steelers won. Uh, I got the Chiefs wrong. I thought the Chiefs were going to beat the Texans, um, and then the Texans won. And I thought, well, maybe the Texans are actually pretty good. They can beat the Patriots. No, uh, Lions and Titans. I thought the Lions were going to roll through the Titans. Titans won on a ridiculous touchdown throw. It wasn't like this seventy-five yard pass, but it was uh, a decent side, a decently long pass, like ten, fifteen yards, I think. And Mariota just literally put the ball in the one perfect spot. Like, there was no margin of error. There was no room for error. Um, it just, I, I watched it happen on Red Zone. I was just like, no way. That like that was ridiculous. I didn't know Mariota could do that. Um, but surprised the hell out of me. Um, also, shout out to Red Zone. Red Zone, I think you should, everyone should get, especially to keep up with fantasy purposes. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, I said the Seahawks would beat the Rams. Now, I don't know if I said anything about it when I made the prediction, but usually I would pick the Rams, but the Rams looked so bad week one that I said there's just no way. But Rams always play the Seahawks well, so I'm not really surprised, but it's a huge bounce back. Uh, I said the Bucks were going to beat the Cardinals. They got destroyed. That's the Cardinals team I know uh, and predicted to go to the Super Bowl, so... Good to see that from them. Uh, Jaguars, Chargers. I thought the Chargers are going to just be terrible. Turns out the Jaguars are just terrible. Uh, Falcons edged out the Raiders. Surprising. And the Vikings edged out the Packers, which, again, was surprising. But Vikings are playing real well. So 8-8 eight and eight and 19-13 and 13 overall. 0-1 this week. I already talked about the Pats, so we're going to go on to Week 3 predictions for the Sunday and Monday games. Cardinals at Bills. I have the Cardinals. Uh, Raiders at Titans. I think the Raiders are going to get back on the winning track. Um, Giant, or Redskins at Giants. I have the Giants. Um, I think they're just playing really well. Their defense is stepping up. Olivier Vernon is the real deal. He's good. Um, R- Landon Collins is playing real well, which is good to see. Sterling Shepard is playing amazing. Odell still touchdownless, but... Hey, whatever we're doing is still working. Cruz is back to 100%, so really, really looking good for the Giants. Uh, I'm going to predict them to win, so I'm going to have them start 3-0, which is good. Uh, Browns at Dolphins. I have the Dolphins winning. The Browns did show some signs of good yes, er, last week. Uh, they were destroying the Ravens until the Ravens came back and beat them. Um, Josh McCown... Actually, I think is not bad. I think he shows signs of being really good sometimes. And he got hurt and came back and played, and he said he just doesn't want to let his team down and he wants to play. So I respect the hell out of that. However, I do think the Dolphins are going to win and get their first win. Uh, Ravens at Jags. Uh, if you asked me this in the week one, I would have said Jaguars pretty confidently. Now I'm saying Ravens pretty confidently. Ravens are showing that they could be a contender this year. Um, I'm still not a believer in Joe Flacco, but uh, 
Uh, the Jaguars are just playing awful, so they need to get their shit together. Uh, Lions and Packers. Uh, Packers. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the Lions, though. Golden Tate. I uh, had to bench him in fantasy. I'm going to go over my... I'm actually going to talk fantasy after the predictions, but I had to bench Golden Tate. Uh, he's just not getting looks, so I don't know what's up with that. Uh, Amir Abdullah uh, got hurt. don't think he's going to be playing. And Eric Ebron missed practice a couple of days. He's, he's a little banged up, so even if he plays, I think he's not going to be 100%. I'm going to say the Packers are going to win. Next, uh, Vikings and Panthers. Uh, I think this is going to be a big reality check for the Vikings. I think the Panthers are going to win. I think that's going to get them back on track. Uh, two we- uh, two wins in a row. I think they're going to start rolling, and I think the uh, Vikings are going to come back to earth. Uh, and Sam Bradford's going to come back to earth. He's actually playing very well. Rams at Bucks. Uh, Bucks are going to win this one. Rams play real well against good teams. Bucks aren't really that good of a team, so I'm going to have the Bucks win. And the Rams are probably going to look shitty again. 49ers at Seahawks. Seahawks are going to bounce back and beat the crappy 49ers team that I don't think will go anywhere this year. Uh, So Seahawks in that one. Uh, Jeff, no, Jeff. Jets at Chiefs. If you mix them together, they're Jeffs. Uh, I think the Chiefs are going to win this one. Uh, It's going to be close. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets won, but Chiefs at home. One of the toughest stadiums, if not the toughest stadium, to go into and play. Uh, I think sometimes I think it's actually harder to go in there and win than at uh, in Seattle. Uh, Chargers at Colts. I'm gonna say the Colts are gonna pick up their first win here. Tough start for them. Uh, I just I just think they're a better team overall than the Chargers, so they're gonna win. Steelers at Eagles. Uh, Eagles have been overperforming, uh, and they've been playing great. Uh, I don't think they're as great as they've been playing. Call me a hater. Call me a Giants fan. That's just how I see it. Steelers are the better team. I'm going to pick the Steelers. Uh, Sunday night. I don't know why this is the Sunday night game, but Bears at Cowboys. Uh, I'm going with the Cowboys. Uh, Bears are just awful. Uh, Dak is playing pretty well. Ezekiel Elliott's playing pretty well. Uh, Dez has been getting more catches now. Um, And... Dak loves throwing to Escobar, and he's he's been all over the place. Um, So I'm going to go with Cowboys. Uh, Monday night, Falcons at Saints. Not the best Monday night game, but it is kind of a rivalry. Uh, I'm picking Saints. They're going to get their first win, and they're also at home, and they usually win at home. So that is going to be week three. Uh, I don't forget this week. week, Next week for Thursday night, uh, Dolphins at Bengals. I hate picking picking against the Dolphins because I do think that they are a good team and that they will play well, but I do think the Bengals will beat them, so I'm picking Bengals. Now I want to talk a little bit about my fantasy teams, for those of you who are interested. Uh, I'm in two leagues, both $50 leagues, so hopefully win some money by the end of the year. Um, My shittier team um, is actually in my brother's league. I'm 1-1 in sixth place right now. Um, my roster, I got Eli as quarterback, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Des Bryant as my two main receivers, Devonta Freeman and LeGarrette Blunt uh, as my running backs. Blunt has been playing great. Devonta's been playing all right. Des has been back and forth, and Hopkins, besides this week, the first two weeks were good. Um, and Eli's been fine. Uh, tight end Julius Thomas, who has had one good, one bad, I, I believe, and Jarvis Landry is my flex. Uh, which is he's he's fine. Bench I got Dalton as my backup QB. Jeremy Hill who's been underperforming. Uh, uh, Ty Lockett, um, Steve Smith and Josh Gordon as my uh, receivers on the bench. Um, Lockett's fine. Steve Smith's fine. Gordon if he comes back, I'll be lucky to have because I'm sure he'll play well. Haven't really had to use any of them yet, so I have no negative things to say or positive things to say. And then my last bench spot is Tyler Eifert. When he comes back, I think he's going to dominate and be better than Julius Thomas. So I had to pick him up. Or I think I actually drafted him So because he's only missing, I think, four weeks. Uh, my kicker is Cairo Santos. I think he's actually really good. He can make a lot of far kicks, so I like him. And then Arizona D, uh, they played phenomenal against the Bucks. I think they're the most underrated uh, defense in the league. Uh, I think they're the best defense in the league. Maybe, I guess, after seeing a couple weeks, uh, the Broncos maybe, but I love the Arizona D. 
got my boys Patrick Peterson, Tyron Matthew, and then added Chandler Jones. So I think that that defense is great. Uh, my other league, which is the league I created with all people from Franklin Pierce, um, I'm two and zero in first place. Uh, my team's looking very well. Uh, my starting quarterbacks are, or my starting quarterbacks, my starting quarterback is Andrew Luck this week, but uh, my bench quarterback is Cam Newton. Uh, I've been, I played Luck the first week and he did outstanding. Uh, I played Drew Brees against my friend Billy. Uh, and Drew Brees played first and just went off, scored about 60 points. And then I was like, oh, I'm fucked. I'm not going to win this week. Andrew Luck gets like 70. I come back and win. Um, I actually came back last week, too, and won. So hopefully I can come back this week and win because I'm already down. Um, so I have Luck and Newton. Uh, this week is Luck starting, though, against San Diego while Newton plays in Minnesota. Um, my wide receivers are Sterling Shepard and... Uh, Travis Benjamin that I put in because Golden Tate, like I said, sucks and doesn't get... Well, he doesn't suck, but he's not getting targeted. Uh, also have Dez in this league as well. Um, wanted to trade him after week one. I just didn't like that he wasn't playing with Romo and that he was kind of injured, but keeping him now, he's doing pretty well. Uh, running backs that are playing this week, Theo Riddick uh, in the Lions and Ryan Matthews in the Eagles. Matthews has been playing phenomenal, so I'm keeping him in. Uh, Theoretic, I had Amir Abdullah, Amir Abdullah, blah, tough to say, uh, and Theoretic did really well the first week, so I picked him up, played them both the second week, uh, both underperformed, and Abdullah got hurt, so I dropped Abdullah, now I'm just rolling with Riddick, tight end is Gronk, hasn't played yet, I put him in this week, hoping he would get a couple catches, um, Dwayne Allen was my backup, uh, I played him Week one did great. Week two did nothing. I decided to drop him and pick up Vance McDonald, but I still thought Gronk would do pretty well because Vance is playing against Seattle this week. Gronk didn't get anything, uh, so that's not good. And I'm playing New England D, so I'm already down like 30 points. Uh, and now my flex, I picked up Eddie Royal. Uh, he's had two um, games over 10 points, so I think he'll do well. On my bench, Vance McDonald, Golden Tate, Cam Newton, Jeremy Hill again, and Duke Johnson Jr. Haven't played Duke yet. Jeremy Hill did fine week one, and then just the matchups aren't well for him against the other two running backs I play in the flex spot, so I just haven't had the opportunity to play him. Uh, my kicker, Dan Bailey, best kicker in the league because uh, Dak is having some some issues in the, end, or in the red zone, so they're getting a lot of field goals, and I'm happy with that because, one, I don't like the Cowboys, so it keeps them out of the end zone, and two... A lot of fantasy points. And defense Arizona again. When I do multiple leagues, I like having similar players so I don't have to root against and for the same players. It's it's annoying when you're playing a guy in one league and playing with him in the other. So I usually like to keep similar guys. But sometimes, you know, you just can't draft them in both. So it's, it's difficult. But I'm real confident about this, this uh, Franklin Pierce league. Uh... I th I'm bouncing back in my brother's league. I should win this week. Should go two and two and one. So fantasy's looking good this year. All right. Since I was reminded that Clash of Champions is tomorrow, I'm gonna go over and preview the show and predict the show. Um, there is a pre-show match, and it's Alicia Fox versus Nia Jax. Uh, I'm glad they're doing something with Foxy. She's still got that crazy girl gimmick which is fine, um, but and I'm also glad Nia Jax is actually wrestling an actual female on the roster, um, so that's good. Uh, Nia Jax is going to go over, pretty obvious. Uh, for the main card, we have the Cruiserweight title, uh, Brian Kendrick versus TJ Perkins. Uh, rumor has it that on Raw, they're not going to let the uh, Cruiserweights be as crazy as they were in, in, his, in his, like, Hundred miles an hour as they was as they were in the cruiserweight classic, which I understand, I get it. Um, they're probably not going to get as much time, and if, even if they do, they just don't want them to overdo it. I get it, but I hope that on the pay per views they just let them do what they did on the cruiserweight classic. That's all I'm hoping for. Uh, I think this match is going to be very good. Uh, I'm glad that it's a new match than what we saw in the cruiserweight classic. 
because we had the number one contender match. It was Brian Kendrick versus Swan versus Cedric versus uh, Grand Metalik. And Perkins had already beaten um, Swan. So I was hoping Swan didn't win that one. Um, even though I love Rich Swan, he's awesome. I was pulling for Cedric, uh, but Brian Kendrick got it. And I, I get it, he's the older one and he's the most established. Um, put him in the match, put, have him put over Perkins. Um, and Kendrick's playing the heel pretty well, so... I, he, he's, a, he's a heel, but he's also the... You can sympathize with him, but he's doing dirty things to get what he wants, which is fine. He, his character's working. Uh, TJ Perkins is just amazing. Uh, everything he's done so far is outstanding. Uh, Perkins over Kendrick to retain. I wouldn't be surprised if Perkins held the title for a very long time. Um, Ibushi and Sabre Jr. both didn't sign. So that's why they didn't win the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, because I didn't know, th- I thought they would win, and then obviously, not if they weren't going to sign, they were just going to get the trophy and whatever. But once they announced that uh, the title was the uh, main event of the Cruiserweight Classic, then it made sense why neither of them made it. But like I said in the last podcast, I love that neither of them made it. Um, the tournament was missing upsets. But moving on. Next match, the best of seven, uh, match seven, Cesaro versus Sheamus. Um, I think this is a stupid series, and they did the... Sheamus went up three matches to zero, and Cesaro came back and won the next three. Um, So if Cesaro wins, this is the most cliche fucking best of seven, and I think it's awful. They've been having great matches, uh, good good to decent to pretty good matches, Um, but... And one of them was on a live show, which was stupid, but I guess it if they, they mapped it out and they wanted it to be the seventh at Clash, so makes sense. But I'm picking Sheamus. I, it's so dumb if they just have Cesaro win four in a row after losing three. Uh, I'm going to have Sheamus win. I think the winner gets a title shot. I think both deserve a title shot. It's been far too long for Sheamus, and Cesaro really has never gotten one. And they're both incredible talents, so... Pick and shame is the uh, U.S. title. Rusev defending against Reigns. I think Reigns is actually going to get it this time. Uh, Reigns finally going to get the mid card title. Keep him there. Uh, it's a good spot for him for now. Um, I think they're going to have a pretty good match, but yeah. End of the day, Reigns is going to walk away. People are probably going to boo, but whatever. Uh, next match: Zayn versus Jericho. Glad Zayn is on the card. A part of me really wants to think Jericho is going to win. Uh, but I'm picking Zane. It's going to be a good match. Hopefully it gets more than five minutes. Uh, next is my pick for match of the night. Uh, for Backlash, I successfully picked match of the night. I mean, that's more of an opinion thing, but the consensus was that Miz Ziggler was match of the night. Um, and I actually got four out of five matches right. forgot to mention that before. Uh, for Backlash... Um, not including the Orton Wyatt match I predicted because that didn't happen and I didn't know Kane was gonna come out and face Wyatt. But four out of the five matches I predicted were right. It's a pretty obvious pay per view. I think this one's less obvious, but I don't know. Backlash is probably gonna be better. But anyway, match of the night I think it's gonna be Charlotte, Sasha, and Bailey. And honestly, I'm having trouble picking the winner. I can see all three of these winning. I could see them just giving it to Bailey. Boom. Something new, something great, have a run with it. I can see them just keeping Charlotte because they don't want to keep switching back and forth too quickly. And I can see Sasha getting it back because the only reason she dropped it was because she was hurt and took a couple took a couple weeks off, honestly, from SummerSlam to now. If they didn't even need to drop the title, I think she could have won and then just rested. They could have said she was injured and then not have her. She would still be champion, not wrestle, but she wouldn't have not wrestled within the 30 days that the gimmick is that you need to defend your title. And even if they didn't do that, they could have just had her on commentary, could have had a referee one of Charlotte's matches or something. They didn't need to have Sasha drop the title. So I'm going to pick Sasha because I think they want her to be champ. The only reason I can see them her not winning is because they don't want it too many title changes that quickly. But I'm going to say Sasha. Next, we have the tag title matches, the New Day defending against the club. I'm picking club. Um, I would be fine with either outcome. Just hope they have a good match. Uh, But the club's finally, I think, going to get the titles. 
Uh, the New Day is still so over, but they're not as over as they used to be. I don't think they're getting boring or stale, but the title run, I guess this, it has more to do with the rest of the product. The New Day was the, one of the best things in WWE, and their title run was one of the best things going on. But I guess the rest of the product has gotten better, so it made them less good. But still, I think their title run has been awesome, but I think they're going to give it to the club. Uh, Well-deserved for the club as well. Uh, and the next is the main event, o uh, Owens versus Rollins, and I really think this is bring me flashbacks to my predictions about Dean versus uh, AJ Styles at Backlash. Um, this should be match of the night. It's got the most star potential, Owens versus Rollins. Like, that's huge. Uh, but like AJ Styles, Owens is the obvious winner. They just gave him the title. I don't think Rollins would get it back. Um, so I think this match is going to disappoint a little. It may be a little predictable throughout this match with all the spots, but I hope they they uh, they did like Dean and AJ did and actually like tear the house down. Um but Owens is going to win, and I think we will see a Triple H appearance. I think that's more than obvious. And I think overall the show is going to be pretty good. I think Backlash will be a little better. Um, hopefully the women's in the main event are as good as they, as they are on paper. Um, the Cruiserweight match should, shouldn't disappoint. Um, so overall should be a good show. All right, I haven't really talked about UFC on this podcast, I s talked about the punk thing a little, but um, I'm going to talk about UFC. A couple of people actually asked me to talk about it, uh, so this is this is my take on UFC. I'm just going to give you my background of when I started watching, like how what I follow and who I follow. It's it's not much. It's not like if I were to talk about WWE, but here are my thoughts. I first started watching um, the first pay-per-view I started watching was a free show on Fox, so I guess not pay-per-view, um, and it was Jones versus Matashenko, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Jones just destroyed him. Uh, from then on, I was a fan of John Jones. Um, I don't remember how I started liking him, but Anderson Silva was also my other favorite. Um, so I knew those two guys really more than anything. Those are the two, those are my two guys. Um, like most non-real UFC, like diehards, those are the guys, but I remember I made a bet with two of my friends, um, I bet that John Jones would beat Ryan, v Ryan Bader, and I bet Anderson Silva would beat Vitor Belfort, I made the same bet with two people, and they both won, that's the one where Silva front kicked Belfort, and that was like the cover of the UFC game, and Jones beat Bader, and I made some money, and I was like, wow, fuck yeah, UFC's pretty dope. Um, so, became a fan of those. Got a little stale after a while for me. I didn't, I didn't watch every pay-per-view. I didn't watch every Ultimate Fighter. I actually don't watch the Ultimate Fighter at all. But then, when women started fighting, and, like, Rousey was a thing, like, that was just awesome. Like, all Rousey's matches were awesome to watch just because they were so quick. Um, never would buy a Rousey pay-per-view because, obviously, that match is going to last two minutes. So it would be a waste of money. But it was cool to see. She was really awesome for the sport. Um, she really helped me stay into it a little. Uh, when she, I remember I was at a party um, when she lost her first match. And I just remember looking at my phone and just everyone I could see, I'd be like, what the fuck, Rousey just lost. And everyone was like, what? She doesn't lose. And then uh, it was just, it just, it was pretty upsetting. Uh, and then I really liked Misha Tate as well. I liked her, just not as much as Rousey. But then when Rousey stopped, I really rooted for Tate to beat Holly Holm because I hate Holly Holm because she beat Rousey. But Misha Tate was awesome, and then she lost to UFC 200, which was unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I don't haven't really watched lately. Um, I didn't watch the Diaz McGregor fight. I um, was just keeping up with it on Twitter. Um, Matt, we were actually in Brooklyn for SummerSlam. Matt had it on his computer, I think, and I was kind of looking, not really. But um, I don't like McGregor. Um, and before I say why, but the match was awesome. Diaz, the fight was awesome, I should say. Diaz, McGregor, they kicked each other's asses. Um, didn't see it all, so I can't really judge who should have won. But I think a main reason why McGregor won is because they want a third one. 
because after all, it's a business and people will buy that. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I don't like McGregor because he talks so much shit about wrestling. He talks so much shit about people. And specifically wrestling, he, the only reason he is as popular as he is is because he is this character. He is this guy who just talks shit, doesn't give a fuck, and tries to kick people's ass. And uh, newsflash, that's what wrestling is. You play a character. That's how pe- like people don't understand UFC and WWE are so much si- more similar than they think. A lot of UFC fans will be like, oh, it's real, they're actually hurting each other. Yeah, okay. But the way the business is modeled is so similar, it's crazy. UFC fighters will always start the biggest beef. They'll always talk shit, uh, weigh in, so get in each other's faces, whatever. And oh, everyone's like, oh my god, these two people actually hate each other. They're going to kill each other. After the match, they hug. And it's like, why, why are you hugging? Oh, because you don't actually hate each other? Oh, and you just kind of did that so we would buy the pay-per-view? Okay, this is wrestling. So, which is good because I like the storyline aspect of wrestling. That's what I think UFC needs, but it's just like, don't tell me they're not similar because they're exactly similar. Uh, I don't think UFC is determined, predetermined at all. I don't think anyone takes falls for anyone. But, but again, like McGregor and Diaz, if it's close, I think the judges will give it to the guy who they think will make them more money or who can get the rematch. So that's really my gripe with it. Um, and talking about UFC 200, I actually watched I watched that with a couple people. Um, we, or I thought it was very disappointing. Um, I know that there was injuries, and I know John Jones got suspended. And last minute, they had to do Silver Cormier, uh, and. They made they were there was gonna do Brock versus Hunt as the main event, which I thought was dumb. Uh, I do think Tate and oh, I can't I'm blanking on the new champ's name, but I think that honestly should have main evented, and I'm glad it did. Good for them. Huge for women's fighting and women in general. They deserved it. Um, sucks that they had to main event because other matches fell through, but I still think they deserved it. Um, but overall, you just watch it and you weren't like, oh my god, this is UFC 200. This is huge. This is a big deal. And they immediately outdid themselves with McGregor Diaz, so that shit sucked. Um, and if it was wrestling, this is where wrestling, I think, beats UFC by an infinite amount. Performance aspect. Vince McMahon would not have let his biggest show not feel like the biggest show of all time. And he and nine times out of ten, like wrestling fans give the booking a lot of crap, but I think for WrestleManias, Vince does the best he can. Um, like WrestleMania thirty uh was the biggest show. WrestleMania thirty was the thirtieth anniversary, just like two hundred was the two hundredth show, I guess. Um but just like the whole feel aspect, the New Orleans, the stage, the the lights, the everything, the confetti falling on Daniel Bryan when he won. It's just, it's a show, and UFC is a fight, but it's also a show. It's also promoted. It's also ways to get fans to buy their shit. So I think they may, should have made it a bigger deal. I think they undersold UFC 200 a lot. Um, and yes, there have been bad WrestleManias, and there have been bad booking decisions, but they try to make it feel like you're watching something special and you're watching something great. Um, WrestleMania 32 is the biggest thing ever. It was in Dallas Stadium, so or AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Um, and even if the matches aren't great, they're gonna try. If, or if the people are injured, like Seth Rollins gets hurt, um, they still have. I mean, they had Reigns and Triple H uh, main event, which people hated, but they still had Shane fall off a 20 foot cage. They brought him back to wrestle. They brought The Rock back to, I guess, had a match, but him, Shawn Michaels came back, Stone Cold came back. They made it seem like, wow, this doesn't happen all the time. This is special. UFC just seemed like another pay-per-view. UFC is now in New York. Uh, I think that's amazing. Um, 
I think every state should allow it. I think it's stupid if they don't. They're losing on money. Uh, MSG is the greatest uh, arena of all time, most famous arena, trademarked. So I think um, I think it's great for the company. I think it's great for New York. I think it's stupid that places don't allow it. All right, moving on from UFC. Uh, Joel asked me to talk about this, and I posted on Facebook too. I thought it was hilarious, the uh, Between Two Friends with Hillary. Um, uh, she's she's pretty awesome for doing it. Um, I don't think Trump would do it. Um, I didn't. Ex- I wouldn't expect Hillary to do it. But I think it, it wasn't the best one. Obviously, there's been better ones with different people. But for Hillary, it was awesome. Uh, it was it was better than the Obama one. The Obama one seemed like scripted and stupid. But this one, Hillary actually kind of seemed like she didn't know whether he was joking or not. I mean, Obama's probably a smarter guy when it comes to pop culture and who Zach Galifianakis is, so makes sense. Um, the one part that pops into my mind that I thought was hilarious was he, she, he asked her if uh, how she felt uh, about losing the Scott Bayo vote. I just thought that part was hilarious. Um, most of it made me laugh. That's just the one part that I remember off the top of my head. Uh, the next thing Joel actually asked me to talk about was Uber versus Lyft. Um, I can't talk for Lyft, never use it, uh, but Uber's awesome, uh, me and my brother use it to get around Brooklyn, uh, it was simple, it was easy, except when it actually wanted us to partner up with, uh, somebody else, I forget what it's called, Uber Plus or something, but it's easy, you just get on your phone and you, you go on, and a car is there within five minutes, and you go to your destination, it's not that expensive, um, so yeah, we used it to get around places like Brooklyn. Where else did we use one? We had a car in Florida. I, I I'm guessing they used it to go around WrestleMania. I wasn't there, but it's it's really good for places where you don't want to drive, or you take a train somewhere, and you need to get around. Uh, I re- recommend using it better than taxis easily. Uh, and I was actually an Uber driver for a little. Uh, did it to make quick cash um you don't actually get it pretty quickly you have to wait a week or two but if you go on a decent amount of trips that are decent in uh miles you'll get a good amount of money uber takes some but it's not it's not as bad as you would think and while i'm noticing this podcast is the longest one yet it's already at 37 minutes almost 38 um which is crazy because i had no topics coming into this morning but uh, I want to thank everyone for responding on Twitter when I asked. Uh, I didn't have asking for, or I had. I was asking for topics. There you go. Can't speak today. Uh, people really help me out here. Um, please comment again on what you would want me to talk about, um, or what you want future videos to be. Uh, I am gonna do a video this week eating a double double animal style from uh, In and Out Burger. I'm going to time myself. I think I can do it in well under two, not well under, but under two minutes. Um, I'm going to do more food challenges like that. I think that's hilarious. I'm going to get somebody, I think I'm going to get a guest on the podcast next week. Um, I just talked to Joel while we were, he was telling me topics to talk about. I want to get him on. He's very into music, wrestling, and UFC, so that'll be a great show. Um, I want to get my brother on talk wrestling and New York sports uh, and a couple of my friends have expressed interest in wanting to get on so should be a good couple episodes coming up um, thanks again for listening I'm going to try to pump out more videos um, but again with work and a couple of things that I do um, it's not the easiest but again this is what I want to do so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it I'm going to put out more reviews uh, I am going to get around to watching Stranger Things and reviewing that. And Luke Cage actually just came out, so I'm going to give that a try. Um, but again, thanks for watching and supporting. Please subscribe if you're not. Check out Joel. Links are in the description. Um, and again, just thanks for everything. Stay tuned for next week and all the future videos coming up.